Hello everyone, if you guys can hear me or see me, we are in the process of starting this portion, this QA portion of webinar, uh, waiting for the rest of the folks to join in and um, let's, let's give everyone a few minutes. Okay, I think we solved some technical challenges with GoToWebinar. And we're about to start. Hi, everyone. I'm sure Sergey already welcomed you guys, but thank you for joining. We're excited to continue this conversation. It, you know, we kind of got started last time, and you know, time ran short really quickly. All right, so let's just jump in. I know we're a few minutes over. Thank you for your patience. So just a quick recap, you know, today is a continuation of a QA session that we had on our previous webinar that was about Sitecore XM Cloud Migrations powered by AI. Again, your hosts are myself, I'm Kevin Suarez Melendez, I'm Lead Architect and Sitecore MVP here at Accentium. And joining us, we have Sergey. Sergey, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Sergey Biatsenka. I'm a multi-year Sitecore MVP and uh, Senior Director here at Accentium. Thanks, Sergey. And before we continue, we're going to go over a super quick recap, but we don't want to spend a ton of time there because we want to get to the questions. And we do have some questions that were left unanswered last session, so we'll start with those. But please, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat now or to that questions field so that as we get through those previously asked questions, if you have any new ones, we can go ahead and jump to those right after. All right, so our last session was really understanding how AI is playing a pivotal role in many projects, including a migration from Sitecore XM XP to XM Cloud. And the takeaways were we want to reduce dev time and cost and increase how fast we get to the market. There were also a few takeaways. I'm not going to go through this necessarily, but really is it's a powerful tool, but it needs to be uh, monitored. You need to make sure that the output is what you expect and refine and optimize based on that. And if used correctly, you can save a whole ton of time. All right, so let's jump into the Q&A. Again, I know that was super quick recap, but we really want to start this discussion. So one of the questions uh, from last session was, hey, that was a great demo of how to manually use those AI tools. Is Accentium also building tools to help with the process? So it, essentially, wow, that's great. You can input a prompt into an AI, but is there something more streamlined? And the answer, the short answer is yes. Here at Accentium, we're, we're building a range of tools that do help with many processes, uh, one of them being migrations. So for example, we have an X-Core accelerator, which has a ton of out of the box, uh, responsive compliant components, and it's optimized for performance. And from that, and, and this is gonna play into a little bit from another question, we're hoping to get you from getting access to your systems to content entry or content migration in about a week. So that's one tool that's essentially a playbook and out of the box components that we built that are common to get you moving as fast as possible. And when it comes to content and bespoke components, AI plays a part there. We also have tools uh, that we're building that are less about migration, but do leverage AI. For example, we're, we're building a, uh, a personalized helper. So with the marketer as the pilot, you can use AI as essentially an extension in your browser to personalize the content on your website. So you give it some context, like your brand context, you give it some persona context, and it's gonna help you based on what you input on it to personalize that content for that particular persona for your brand. So essentially, yes, we're trying to build those tools. And, and Sergey, do you wanna add any additional tools or R&D that we've been building internally as far as integrating AI into a bit more streamlined process or tool? Well, I, I think it's a very, very broad question. I see that the landscape of the, the whole discipline of software engineering is changing. 
and what we've been doing um, at Accentium at, uh, at our migration projects, uh, as well as the new projects, any kind of projects really is, uh, the first question I would ask myself is, okay, can this be done with the help of AI? And more often than not, it can be. And yeah, there's, like we, we're building our scripts and tools and processes, and we're leveraging um, and exploring, uh, as I'm sure everyone else is, uh, all the tools that, that already exist and pop up on um, on 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 a, on a tool market, if I can put it this way. Awesome. Now here's one coming back to a particular XMXP migration use case. And can you give us a sense of overall migration time from XP to XM Cloud now that you use Gen AI, the time saved in weeks slash months? And the time saved is a big a bit hard to determine just because one migration might take a month, another migration may take six months, right? So it's not so much in time saved, but what we're seeing is with our accelerator, right? Again, about a week from getting access to bootstrapping the accelerator to content entry or content migration, you have about a week. Now, again, that's using a lot of the out of the box components that we've built, but at that point in one week, you can start entering content for those out of the box components or migrate content into them. And at the same time, if you have components outside of those out of the box components, of course, that's where we would use some of the techniques that we've shown here uh, to migrate some bespoke components. Sergey, would you like to add anything to that? Um, I what the magic number I have in my mind is uh, I think we can say between forty and sixty plus percent of the time if we do it right with AI. Do we get this? Well, it depends on so many things, but uh, yeah, I think we we can roughly double the the the, the time to market uh, and and kind of lessen the effort by half. With the, when we when we do, when we use it properly and we when we do it right and when when, when we know how to do it, um, obviously that if I do it for the first time it's gonna be slower. But uh, every fall every time after, uh, I kind of I have my go tools, I have my scripts from before, I have my techniques, and uh, that's kind of that's what we develop in here, and that's what we um, are sharing with some. Which, which is some, some of which is what we try to share with you guys. Yeah, ab absolutely. And as Sergey is alluding to, you know, the more we use these AI tools, the better they're going to get. Not just because the LLMs themselves are getting better, but because we're exploring techniques to be able to augment the LLMs, right? So sometimes LLMs, for example, OpenAI's latest model. The latest information is from December of last year, which is not very old, right? That's still pretty new, but a lot can happen in three months. So we are exploring techniques of essentially augmenting the LLM context and information so that it can account for previous learnings that we have done in the past. Perhaps we gave it a prompt and the output was not optimal and we had to refine it manually. Well, giving it that context of, well, here's the refinement we want from the get-go uh, to make it better for our use cases. So yeah, we're hoping that if you don't use the accelerator, right, if 40, 60 percent is our, our current savings, either to be able to hit that goal more frequently or to make it even more aggressive. All right. So next question. I have React apps connected to Sitecore, but want to convert all to Next.js. Is that pretty simple to convert with AI? So that that's definitely can be a loaded question. I would say it's definitely possible, right, but how simple that particular migration leveraging AI is going to be, will vary project to project. The good news is that most of your project will be able to be brought over to Next.js relatively straightforward and AI won't struggle much. I mean, Next.js is a React framework after all. Now, the, because Next.js is a framework and it brings in a lot of features, some that may overlap with what you used to have, you will still be able to leverage AI for those, but you will have to think about that to really engineer those prompts and that context to give it as an input for it to transform that code properly for you. So it's not as simple as just, oh, we'll convert this to this. It'll need to know a little bit more, right? There's, there's routing changes. You have pages versus app routing in Next.js. And if you want to leverage SSG or SSR, you're going to have to think about, well, how does my data fetching strategy change? Now, again, thinking through that problem, understanding how that's going to change the way 
your code is structured, you can give that input to AI, right? So it's still, the simplicity is a little less because you have to think through that and you have to make those decisions. But once you're past that, you don't necessarily have to develop it yourself. You can help, you can use AI to help do a lot of that for you. So again, well, any perspectives there? I, I would kind of from slightly different perspective. Is it simple? Uh, no, it's still not. Uh, you, you, you have to understand what you're doing. And it really is, it really depends on who is driving the process, right? So if I, if I'm a, if I'm an architect who understands, uh, Next.js and React, and I understand how to use AI, it will speed up the process a lot, right? So I can, I can ask AI to like, uh, what what uh, to do things like Kevin alluded to like static page generation. Now I, I I understand that what's the difference and I understand what I need to happen. But it's um, at this point, right? At this point in time, this might change in a year or two or sometime very soon. But at this point, I'm still the one who is driving the process. Uh, I'm still the one asking AI to to perform certain tasks and whatever I ask, the the Gen AI will do. But I gotta ask a good questions. I gotta uh, ask, um, give it good tasks, right? So I, I imagine that as me being uh, still being on, on the driving seat and having this overconfident, super knowledgeable junior dev who will do whatever I ask it him to do. But it's going to be if I ask it to do something stupid, it will do something stupid. If I ask it to do something advanced, then that's exactly what it's going to do. Um, so now. Is it pretty simple? It's not automated. It's still human dri driven at this point. It's just, it just can be much, 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 much faster with AI. If I know what I'm doing. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You still need that, that mastermind almost breaking it down into AI palatable tasks for AI to really shine. As of right now, but this is yep. quickly changing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, as far as how quick things are changing, how well does ChatGPT understand Sitecore JSS code? Sergey, do you want to start off off? Start us off um, on this one. Yeah, yeah. So this is a good question. Uh, and ChatGPT is just one of LLMs that we use. I usually use GitHub Copilot just because it has more visibility and more just because it is running in the context of my Visual Studio code and it get to see all the files, the solution, and then it decides what to read, right? The chat GPT, I have to provide the context to it. The chat GPT cannot see my project, right? So uh, things like chat GPT, or actually I think Claude and specifically Claude 3 that had just been, I think it is a better and more powerful tool for code generation than ChatGPT, but uh, don't quote me on this. I'm, I'm kind of playing with that. Um, and a copilot is also, uh, I found it to give, to provide more meaningful code. Um, ChatGPT what tends to hallucinate a lot, especially when it comes to, and now going back to the question, when it comes to a specific libraries, like if it's a very often used code, something like Next.js and React, something that is the more common um, the code is or the language is, the more widely used it, the like the more likely the chance is that it did encounter uh, this kind of frameworks and coding languages in the body of in the whole body of the of the of the information on data that it had been trained on and the the more rare um, the sdk is the the higher the chance it will hallucinate something that doesn't work so now to answer the question on site core gss code it knows some but in my experience it uh this is where it's kind of not super strong as of right now just because it wasn't trained on the on specifically on site core gss and xam cloud it knows some uh, but not a, not enough to to generate hundred percent um, working code at this point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely not perfect. And and there's I guess there's two main things, right? As you can see how how we're approaching this, we are exploring a wide range of tools, right? We're not necessarily married like 
ChatGPT is very popular, so is Copilot. We use both and we use many outside of that because you'll you'll find that some of these models are better at certain tasks. Like Sergey said, Copilot is really good at taking your whole solutions context, whereas ChatGPT isn't. So you have to provide it that context manually. So I guess one good takeaway from there is really you know, don't tie yourself into what you're comfortable. You know, if you're playing with it, I say play with a couple of them or a few of them to really see which one fits your, your use case the best. And as far as it not being great with Sitecore JSS, I do agree. And that's where some of those techniques that we're exploring to see, can we teach it that without having to retrain the model, right? Can we use some type of context mechanism in front of the LLM so that it can be better at what we want it to do? even if it wasn't explicitly trained on that information. Because for example, even if it was trained yesterday, the LLM specifically on that particular SDK, if tomorrow a brand new release comes out, well, you'll be waiting for a while until that LLM gets retrained with that information. So we're definitely exploring some techniques to make that better and not be so tightly coupled to the LLM's understanding of certain things. That, that was a really good question. And we have one minute left. and we have one question here in the chat and the last thing I want to do is leave with one more unanswered. So I'm going to skip the last one that I have from the previous session. And the question here, Ben asks, can you show us how we might create some AI generated content that is adjusted for our predefined company tone of voice? Of course, that's easy. Come with Accentium. We'll give you the tools. I'm, ju I'm just joking. Really the way we do it, and, and our, what we're trying to do is streamline this process is when you are working with an AI model, right? Open AI is one that I use quite a bit. You have to, there, there are two, there's actually quite a few different almost roles that that AI model can play. So you can tell it, hey, your role or as a system, here's what you're going to do. And as part of that, you can give it instructions like, hey, you're going to be a marketing uh, a specialist and you're going to give me this type of content. And within that, you can also give it some context. Hey, you know, here's my brand tone. Make sure that when you respond, you use this type of brand tone. And oh, by the way, I'm trying to target it with this persona, right? So it's part of that input and that context generation to the AI model. Then for the second role, which is the user role, then you can give it the prompt of, hey, here's the content. Can you please personalize this? Or hey, can you generate some context around this? And because now it has the full context of, okay, as a system, here's the information you, you have, you're a marketer and here's your tone and here's your persona you're targeting. And now we're giving it our prompt on top of that context. The AI model has a much higher likelihood of outputting something that aligns with the brand. Now, again, like everything else, I would still say, hey, make sure you look at the output and you approve it and move forward. But it's a great way to go from nothing to almost a full, in some cases, a 100% complete uh, personalized content. Well, all right, guys, thank you for joining. I know we're a minute over, so we'll wrap this up. Thank you so much. If you want to continue this conversation or have additional questions, please reach out, LinkedIn, email, whatever it is, You know, more than happy to keep this going. Thanks. See you guys. Thank you.